Welcome to the studio. 2025 has become the year of multicolor 3D printing. Everywhere you look, new machines are coming out with multi-material support. And the reality is, if you're in the consumer 3D printing space and you don't have multicolor options, you're falling behind. This is the Chidi Q2, Chidi's first entry-level Core XY printer with multicolor capability. It's physically smaller than their other recent machines, and that's intentional. Chidi wanted to hit a lower price point and create a Core XY that fits into the beginner market. That space is currently dominated by Creality and Bamboo Lab, but Chidi clearly wants in. Chidi has always had a reputation for fantastic print quality with engineering grade filaments. Their layer stacking and surface finishes are often some of the best in the category. Now, no printer manufacturer is perfect, and Chidi is no exception. They've had their share of production issues, just like everyone else, but when it comes to the quality of the actual prints, Chidi has always delivered. And now, with the Q2, they're making their first real step into multicolor. So, what does this machine bring to the table? It's an enclosed Core XY with a build volume of 270 by 270 by 256 millimeters. High temperature hardware across the board, a 370 degree hot end, and a 120 degree bed, and a 65 degree actively heated chamber. This printer is hot. Aggressively priced, 449 for the printer itself, and $5.99 if you bundle it with that Chidi Box multi-material unit. The Chidi Box is a four-slot MMU heated to 90 C and has LED indicators and a lockable lid. It's pretty sleek, looks good. The design is clean, it's professional, has a glass front door and flush mounted glass side windows. Look a little bamboo H2D-like, looks pretty good. And of course, it has a very unique sliding top lid. The door and lid are gasket sealed, which makes the machine very quiet and it helps with airflow. And it gives it an airtight feel. So air is pulled in from the lower front and exhausted out the back through a three-in-one filter system with carbon, HEPA, and a pre-filter. Now that's rated at capturing up to like 99.5% of particles, according to Chidi. Inside, the system is carried on dual lead screws with four large linear rods, a nozzle wiper, and a filament cutter. The interface on the front, it's decent, it's responsive, it's a 4.3 inch touchscreen, and it also has an internal camera that has time-lapse support, things like that, and connectivity as far as getting prints to the machine is done over Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or that USB that's on the right side of that interface. And the whole thing runs on a clipper-based system and that's integrated into their own slicer called Chidi Studio so that you can monitor, uh, control, and adjust prints remotely. Now that is a lot of machine for this price. Chidi sent a pre-made project over to me and it's basically, it's an extension cord holder and it's designed to be printed in black PETCF with a white support filament. Now I sliced it up in Chidi Studio, sent it to the printer and let Chidi Box handle the swaps. Now, right away I hit a snag and this is a frustration. The PTFE path had too much friction for the Chidi Box to push filament smoothly. There were two contributing factors here. One, the PTFE tubes from the Chidi Box had bends and kinks on the way to the buffer on the back of the machine. Two, that sliding glass lid really forces that PTFE tube into about a 90 degree turn right before the tool head, which creates a lot of friction. Now my fix was to straighten out the external tubes, and of course that included moving the MMU off to the side to create more gentler curves. And that got the print going. But here's the important part. Beginners won't necessarily know to do that. And this is exactly why user experience matters more than features in most cases. If your first print fails because of something like tube routing, you'll feel defeated before you ever get going on that machine. And this is where, like I said, user experience really comes into play. A novice isn't going to know that's the issue. They just see the error on the interface saying that there was a loading problem. Once it was running, the print is absolutely stunning. PETCF already hides layer lines so well, but this looked like it wasn't even 3D printed. It's absolutely beautiful. It's consistent carbon fiber and super impressed. It's really one of the best looking PETCF results that I've ever seen, and especially at this price point. 
Now, while printing, the Q2 stayed pretty quiet. The enclosure gaskets help, airflow feels intentional, and the door lid closed nice and soft. Inside is a large blower style part cooling fan, and overall the machine feels tidy, it feels organized, it feels professional. I guess I get really excited about printers like this for the, for the main reason that you get to print exotic filaments and you get to do that at home and you get to do it at such a low entry cost. So printing things like what you're watching right there is that PETCF and we get to print this plus so many more and it just turns out so well. The print quality is just fantastic from these cheating machines. Now, who is this printer actually for? Now, I think makers who want a low cost entry into multicolor printing, hobbyists who want a compact enclosed Core XY that can actually handle some of these exotic filaments like ABS, PC, and even, you know, PTCF, PPS, things like that. Anyone stepping up from a budget open frame and wanting a more professional experience is gonna like the Q2. Now, who is this printer not for? Well, if you need a large build volume, this printer isn't going to do it. It's not a 300 millimeter machine. If you expect a flawless plug and play experience with the MMU on day one, well, that feed path and maybe the firmware, they might still need some refinement. If you only ever plan to print PLA, then you're not gonna really need all of the capabilities here. Now, here is my personal take. Chidi knew in 2025 that they couldn't sit out of multicolor. The Q2 is a smart way in. It's affordable, it's compact, and paired with Chidi's strengths of print quality, this is a home run. But the PTFE path is a real user experience problem today. The external tube routing needs a clear guidance out of the box, and the lid induced that 90 degree turn that causes kind of a problem with the tool head, and that's something that's gonna have to be worked out. These are solvable design tweaks. PTFE guides a gentler top feed, and they'll matter more to beginners than almost any spec on the sheet. My mission is to use these machines like a beginner would, because I want everyone, regardless of skill, to be successful. On print quality and capabilities, the Q2 impresses. Smooth out the user experience, and this becomes a very compelling entry-level Core XY multicolor 3D printer. This was not an in-depth look at this printer. I've only had it for a very short time. We'll do some fun things with it later, but I wanted to get this out there so you guys could see exactly what this machine's capable of because I am pretty impressed. Now, one interesting thing that I really look forward to testing out when we do a little bit more in-depth uh, projects with this particular printer is the fact that Chidi shows on their website and even in the marketing material that you can print on tile, you can print on wood, you can print on clothing. And uh, that's something, I don't know, it would be kind of fun to check out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you found this video helpful, please hit that like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. And a huge thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters because I couldn't do this without you. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one. Oh, and YouTube thinks you're going to want to watch this video. So go do that.